Welcome to Lesson 3 of Addicted to Christ. I'm so glad you kept coming and that you're here again. And this is Pastor Alan Newton from Faith Baptist Church in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And our contact information here is fbclebanon at gmail.com. So please keep that in mind. Remember to contact us with any questions you may have, or if you'd like to get in touch with me and have a discussion of some kind, I'm here for you. So as I ha have mentioned before, lessons one, two, and three are very closely tied together. So again, I'm very glad that you've kept with it. And uh, I want you to pay close attention now as we get into both step three in our 12-step program and also lesson three of this uh, of this lesson program. Today's lesson is probably the most important one that you will have the opportunity to hear and study. So thank you for coming again. Step one, I admit that I am powerless over my sin nature and that my life has become unmanageable. Step two, I believe that God can restore me to sanity. Step three, I put my complete trust, faith, in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Step four, I need to make, continually, a moral inventory of myself in the light of the Word of God. Step five, confessing my specific sins to God, I call on a brother or sister in Christ to share the burden of those sins in prayer and watchfulness over me. Step six, understanding that all my sin is forgiven in Christ, I ask God for daily cleansing from any sins I allow into my life. Step seven, I establish a lifestyle that will help me avoid sinful behavior. I ask for God's help daily for strength to resist temptation. Step eight, I will do all in my power to make amends to everyone I have harmed in my life, except where doing so would injure them or others, seeking their forgiveness. Step nine, Following the example of Christ who has forgiven me, I will forgive all the people who have harmed me. Step 10. I do not make excuses for my sinful behavior, but, rather, promptly confess all sin to God and anyone else against whom I have sinned. Step 11. I seek to improve my relationship with God through prayer, Bible study, meditation on God's Word, and interaction with other Christians, especially in my local church. Step 12. I seek to help others come to a biblical knowledge of God and His saving and sanctifying power. To that end, I will endeavor to be an example of the wonderful grace of God, living a life of obedience to Him and of service to others in His great love. Step 3. I put my complete trust, faith, in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. John chapter 1 tells us, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The new birth is the essential starting place for any of us in our walk with God. We have seen through the first two lessons our need of a Savior, our need of a Redeemer, our need of someone who will give us new life. That new life the Bible talks about uh, here and in other places. In John chapter 3, Jesus talks about it, and he says you must be born again. Uh, the fleshly birth is one thing, but you need a spiritual birth because those who are uh, who have never come to that place of completely putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ have only been born once, and they must be born again. They have no spiritual life. There's a city called San Francisco in the state of California, and uh, I've had the privilege of going there one time. And uh, as you look out into the San Francisco Bay, you will see an island, and uh, it's actually just about a mile away from the mainland. And uh, every, everyone knows about this island. It's very famous. The name of it, of course, is Alcatraz. 
there was a federal penitentiary built on that island that was operational for 29 years. What struck me as I looked out uh, across the water to the island was mostly the closeness uh, of that island to the mainland. It really didn't sit that far out into the water. But of course, the conditions there were were very tricky for anyone to try to get across one way or the other. In fact, uh, during the 29 years that Alcatraz served as a federal penitentiary, there were 14 escape attempts that would involve 36 inmates. 23 of them were recaptured, six were shot and killed, two drowned, that brings us up to 31. And the other five are listed as missing and presumed drowned. So in other words, as far as we know, no one ever escaped uh, successfully from Alcatraz. One of the inmates uh, after his time uh, on the island, his name was Leon Thompson, known as Whitey Thompson, said this, it's a beautiful view. You have the Golden Gate Bridge, fresh air, you can see all the ships coming in and out of port. There was never a day that you didn't see all that you were missing in life. It was all there. Everything I wanted in my life was right in front of me. Yet it was a mile away, and I couldn't get it. I think sometimes that's the way a lot of us feel, particularly if we're in the throes of an addiction, a depression, some of those types of things, we, we understand that there's something right there, something good that we can see sometimes. We can have a certain amount of understanding, and yet we just can't quite reach out and take it. If that's the way you feel today, if you feel like you're in the prison of your own uh, sin, if, you, if you're in a prison of your own addiction, whatever it might be, and you look out and you see people around you who seem to have joy, who seem to have a victorious life, understand that that light, the light in the darkness came, the true light, which gives light to everyone. He made the world, and then he came to the world as a human being. Unfortunately, most people didn't really recognize him. His own people, the people that uh, he came through, uh, didn't receive him, not as a as a people. Of course, individuals did within that nation. Others who were not of that nation also received him. And the Bible says that who did, the ones who did, the ones who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God. And they were born again, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but they were born of God. They came into his family became his children. That's the light that we need. That's the light that everyone in the world needs. How do we get there? Isaiah 55 talks about this. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he, the Lord, may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God wants to pardon us. God wants to forgive us. God wants to make us righteous. He wants to justify us, if you remember that from the other lesson. He wants to justify us or make us as if we had never sinned in his eyes. But that has to happen by forsaking one way and going to another. The Bible talks about a thing called repentance, and that is a change of mind, a change of the way that we think. And that leads us to confession, because we understand as we read the Word of God, as the Holy Spirit deals with our hearts, as we begin to see the true light and who He is and what He can do, we change the way we think about things. And we no longer depend upon our own reason, our own thoughts. And we say, no, you know what? I'm going to forsake that. I'm going to look to God. I'm going to believe Him. I'm going to accept what He has to say. And when that happens... The Bible says that God has compassion and God abundantly pardons.
the next verse that we're looking at is probably the most famous verse in the whole of the Bible, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We could spend quite a bit of time uh, going through all of the details of this verse, but it is such also a, such a simple statement of these things of God's love for not just one or two or several, but the whole world. And the, the act that came out of that love that he gave his son, so that the simple truth is that all we have to do is believe in him, put our faith, put our trust in him, and then we will never perish, but we will have eternal life. Ephesians chapter 2 goes on to tell us, for by grace have you, you have been saved through faith. We've talked about grace before. That's unmerited favor. That's something you don't work for. That's something that someone gives you that you don't even deserve. By grace, you have been saved through faith. There again, faith, belief, trust. Those words are the same thing. They, they all mean the same thing in the Bible. And so through our belief, through our trust, through confiding in Jesus Christ and what he has told us, what he has done for us, then we can receive the grace of God. He says, this is not your own doing, it's the gift of God. Even this, this, this faith, God will give it to you if you want it, so that his grace can come into your life and give you new life, give you uh, the, the eternal life in his son. It's not, not of your own doing, it's the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. No one's going to stand before God and say, look at me, how great I am. This is why you should let me into heaven. This is why uh, I know that, that I'm your child, God, because I'm just such a good person, and I've done this and done this and done this. No one's going to be able to boast before God, because the only way that we come to God truly is by faith and by understanding that we need, desperately need, his grace. So that no one may boast, <laughs> for we are his workmanship. We're created in Christ Jesus for good works. Of course, we're supposed to do good. Of course, we're supposed to do righteous things. And he says, God has prepared those things beforehand that we should walk in them. He didn't just decide one day, oh, let's see, I think I'll send my son to die for everybody. And the ones that uh, accept him will get saved, and that'd be great. Uh, and then maybe they'll figure out a way to uh, to walk around in the world and that, that will be pleasing to me. What a wonderful gift we have in the Bible, in the Word of God. We are new creatures in Christ when we accept Jesus as our Savior, when we really, truly put our faith completely in Him. We're a new creature. We're created in Christ Jesus to do good works, and God has already determined what those good works are, and we can find them in His Word. All we have to do is just keep coming back and keep coming back to the Bible, to the Word of God, and we'll know exactly what God expects for us to do, how he expects for us to walk, and we will have the strength that comes from him in order to be able to do so. All of these things are gifts from God. You can't do it yourself. God knows you can't do it yourself. You need to know you can't do it yourself, and you need to humbly request of him, beg of him to forgive you, to pardon your sin, to give you his wonderful grace, to save you, to make you his child, and to place you into his family and into his work. Let him show you what his works are. He's prepared them already. He'll show them to us, and then we can walk in them. It seems to me that many people gain some sort of an understanding about God and about his salvation, and yet they continue to have certain confusions, certain fears. One of the fears is that, okay, this is great. I've been accepted by God. I've accepted him. I've accepted what he's done for me in Jesus Christ. And that's wonderful. But what if I fall into sin again? 
What if I go back and do something that I've already done before and I know it's wrong? Maybe I get into a new sin, whatever it is. What happens then? Well, we can be very thankful, very grateful that we have a Heavenly Father who loves us in a way that we, we really can't even completely understand. Listen to these words from Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that wonderful? And isn't that clear? Isn't that one of the clearest things that you've ever heard? Do you doubt that God can save you eternally? Read these words. Read them over and over. Memorize them. Meditate on them. Think on them. Because there is absolutely no wiggle room in these verses for someone to say, yeah, I used to be saved. I used to be a child of God. But then I did this or that. And so now I am separated from the love of God. How can that be? It cannot be. The Bible is so clear about that. Now, the question is, if we keep living in, in our uh, same lifestyle after we have professed a faith in Christ, you know, the question always comes up, are we truly born again? Did we really, do we really trust in Jesus Christ? Have we really placed our faith completely in him? That's an answer that only the individual person can can answer. There's There's nobody else on the planet that can tell you uh, that who can make that judgment, but you definitely want to consider that. Uh, you say, but it's an addiction. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, ha, huh. <laughs> that kind of goes against everything that we've seen so far, and we'll see more things about that. If salvation begins a process of sanctification in us, that doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect in our life immediately, but it does mean there's a change. It does mean there's a new way to walk in. It does mean there are new desires. Do you truly desire to get out of your addiction? Do you really truly desire to do the works that Jesus Christ has for you to do? These are questions, again, that only you can truly answer. Other people might see indications and might uh, make a judgment about it, but no one can know but you. But let me please ask you, encourage you, beg you to make sure at this moment, after these first three lessons, make sure that you really do have the forgiveness of sin that comes through the love of Christ and his gracious offer. And the only way to get that, the only possible way for us to receive that forgiveness and to be in this position of never being separated from the love of God is simply trusting him, simply coming to him and saying, I don't really understand all of this, but I do understand that I can't do this myself. I cannot get rid of my sin myself. I can't get rid of the consequences of my sin myself. There's nothing I can do that would make me justified before a holy God by myself. I need you, God. I need you, Jesus Christ, to save me from this situation. Don't be like the man standing on the rock of Alcatraz, watching the ships go by, feeling the beautiful wind in his face, looking across at that beautiful city of San Francisco with the people coming and going and enjoying their daily lives and yet not able to reach out and participate in that himself. Instead, be on the rock that is Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us several times that he is our rock. He is our foundation. He is the one that we can stand on. And once we're on, 
<laughs> who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The answer is no one, nothing, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I hope you've already made that decision. And if you haven't, take a moment right now, pause this video and uh, contemplate this and call out to God. That's what the Bible tells us to do. In Romans chapter 10, the Bible tells us very clearly, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, just cry out to him and say, I'm in darkness. I see there's light out there, but I don't have it. I understand now that you have done everything to give me eternal life. Please, God, give it to me. Change me. Make me a new creature. Make me your child. If you'll just call out to him, the Bible says whoever will do that will be saved. Once again, we have some discussion questions. And uh, we'll just leave this to you. I'll let you take your time. Write these questions down. Go through them. And if you haven't done so yet, this can give you another opportunity to really stop and contemplate and think about the concept of salvation and forgiveness of sin and becoming a child of God. Please deal with that today, I beg you. If you would like to get in touch with me about anything, please remember the, the main way you can do that is through our email address, which is fbclebanon at gmail.com. And uh, just put my name, Pastor Allen, in the signature, uh, I'm sorry, in the subject line, and uh, that will get forwarded on to me, and I will get in touch with you. I promise to do that. So I am praying that God will use this. I'm praying, even now as I speak, I'm praying to God that he will use this explanation that's been given today, as simple as it is, but that's that's the gospel. It's a very simple thing, powerful and yet simple. And I'm praying that God will use this in the life of anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Father, I do ask you to do that. I ask you to take this feeble attempt and use it with the power that only you have in a way that only you can do to bring people to Christ who need to know him. In Jesus' precious name, amen.